Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Channel Surfing. We're down here at the 2023 Saddle Boat Show and we're going to do a comparison over the RT27 outboard versus the RT29. So without any further ado, let's get started. So we'll start with the RT29 because as you guys all know, we actually channel surfing is an RT27 outboard. We know that boat really well. We did look a lot at the RT29 in deciding between the 27 and the 29. So obviously there's a price difference between the two, pretty substantial. The 29 is a much bigger boat. Um, Width-wise, it's got a 10-foot beam. That's one of the things we love about the 29. When you come and sit in the cockpit, you have lots more space to entertain people in the cockpit than the 27 has. It's like I said, that extra two-foot beam really adds a lot more boat. When you have an extra seat that we don't have. For me personally, the extra seat actually poses a problem. It's great for entertaining, but I'm like, where would I put my pot pole? That was one of the things I was asking myself. The 27's got a really great spot to put the davit for a pot pole for crabbing and shrimping. The other thing of interest, um, obviously, is the powertrain. The RT29 is a diesel inboard, and the RT27 is a... Um, Yamaha outboard so the uh, <clears throat> RT27 is obviously a faster boat the RT29 is going to cruise roughly 14 15 16 knots um, wide open throttle I would guesstimate to be like 20 21 knots whereas we're cruising on the RT27 at uh, 25 knots comfortably wide open throttles about 35 knots um, but you know some people like the inboard we like the outboard, like the ease of maintenance on the outboard. Uh, the diesel um, right here in the engine compartment, it is louder than the outboard. Um, that outboard on the um, RT27 is super quiet. Um, the kicker um, on the RT27 is not quiet when you're full throttle on it, but the, the Yamaha F300 you hardly ever hear. Now we're over here on the RT27 outboard. So, if you look at the dinghy lift right now, it's in the, the semi down position. There's a hand crank you'd use that lifts it up and it would be vertical. There's on the, the hand crank right there. <clears throat> you'd, you'd crank that up, that would lift it up. Then the, the dinghy would be upside down so it doesn't collect water. And then you could go fast on the boat. And then to deploy it, you just uncrank it and then it flops down. Um, lowers down. Lowers down, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. For the utility and ease and getting in and out of the dinghy um, without question um, it's that but the the big challenge is, is that's that would be in the way of fishing if you had a fish on and you're trying to chase it around the boat um, it also ruins the view behind the boat when you're cruising and it's an obstruction like if you're backing up on the boat but if you don't mind that stuff and you're willing to compromise that yeah, it's, all it's all about, all about compromise. compromise a lot of ways i wish i had the utility of this with the benefits of the inflatable of not actually having to have the superstructure. And you know, if, and if, if I had a trailer, I probably would have got it because that would mean if I had a trailer, it means I have a place at home to park the boat, which means I'd have a garage or a shed that I could take it off when I don't need it and leave it at home. Uh, we opted not to get a trailer and keep our boat moored. And the challenge of that is, is being moorage, I'd have no way to ever get it off the boat. It would always be there, right? So that's another way to, to, to consider it as well. And people that have taken it apart um, actually told me the, the dinghy itself is heavier than the bars that hold it by, so, by quite a bit of difference. When we talk about storage space, this is one advantage the outboard on the R27 has over the RT29 is, is this is where the inboard engine would, would fill. We didn't show the engine compartment over there because they have the table set up. Yeah. But it's all full of an engine. Yeah. Um, there's a little bit of storage in RT29 in the back. It also keeps the engine noise um, out of the boat too. Um, yeah. You know, when we're cruising on RT27, we are listening to the radio yeah. while we're doing 25 knots. So, um, looking on the RT27, like I said, uh, shell fishing is our thing, crabbing and shrimping, um, obviously. So, when you look on the starboard side, there's one spot you can put a davit. So, down here, everybody has no seat. On yeah. the 29, there's a seat there, if you remember right. Right, there's a seat here on the 29. So if you look at these, um, like, like what are these special cutouts for? Those are for downrigger balls, right? For your, your uh, port starboard downriggers. So the davit, they drill a hole right here and the bottom of the davit goes through one of these two holes. You take the front one. 
So I only get one downrigger ball storage of mine because the davit fills the other one. Yeah. But it's the perfect setup. And then use the Scotty downrigger plug for power on the pop board. And you just answered a question that we get a lot. What are those slots for? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, downrigger balls. 15 yep. pound, 15, 20 pound downrigger balls fit in there. <laughs> that way they don't roll around when you're cruising. Mm -hmm. Then we go inside the cabin. What we really like in R229 is the aisleways are actually wider, so it's easier to pass people in the hallways and then, um, than the RT27. Um, and here and again, that just goes that two foot extra beam. You get more boat in a, in a two foot extra beam than you do in a two foot extra length of the boat, obviously. Um, so the seats are wider. Um, the uh, cave is actually uh, quite large underneath compared to the RT27. So a little more space, a little more comfort. Shh. Don't wake the puppies. Oh yeah, that's cute. <laughs> Up here on the helm on the RT29, really love the dual displays. Um, I'd like to have that on the RT27, but obviously I don't have enough space for a second display. But then you can have radar dedicated on one display and your chart plotter dedicated on another instead of half the new split screen. Um, <clears throat> it's a lot more real estate for, for all your uh, navigation. Other than that, it's still got autopilot, the Volvo controls, um, similar to what the um, Yamaha has. Um, bow and bow and stern thrusters, um, where the RT27, I would argue, has the same because we've got a, you know the RT27's got an uh -uh, a bow thruster, and then for the stern thruster, it's got the Yamaha F300, which has directional control, which acts as a fantastic stern thruster. Um, <clears throat> so pretty easy to, to operate both boats. The RT29 has a desk. So you could work on your computer while you're at the screw instead of Martin hogging the whole uh, table. That would be nice. <laughs> but when I put you there in that little teeny spot and me hog the table, would I be in that little spot? Yeah. I'd You'd be probably in that be here spot. with your iPad. <laughs> That's really what would happen. I'd still be at the table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then the other thing we really love about the RG29 is an actual stateroom instead of a V-berth. Can I talk about the galley real quick? So, film you? yeah, why don't you do that? So this is kind of nice. Oops, can't even open them. We have, in ours, we have a thing that goes between, so they're separated. So you have to, you have each side here, you have a nice big shelf here and a nice big shelf there. That makes it pretty nice. And all your drawers are a little bit bigger and they're all over here. And you even have a thing for your silverware already built in. Nice. One thing I would miss then is the shelf coming out for the pots and pans. So what you would do is you, one of those shelves would end up with that. So I don't know I would like that. And I like that you have the big space here. On this side of the stove we have this much. It's like a, and it's the same propane stove. Two yeah. burner protein stove, propane stove with an oven. Yeah. So up here on the helm it's a single display. <clears throat> it's an 8612 Garmin. So it's plenty big, right? And usually when I'm driving, I'll do a split screen. So I'll have like, a, if navigation's up, I'll have like a one third for like a uh, less than a, a nautical mile. And then I'll have two thirds of the screen for like two to three to four miles out. So I can zoom the two in. Um, I really like two screens, but there's just not the real estate to do it. But it works, it works good with the single screen, with the split. <clears throat> just being nice to have to have the two. Um, you know, ICOM radio like the RT29 has, same same switches, you know, your horn, your windlass, your running lights, your bilge pumps. And the 27, your fusion radio is right there at the helm. Yeah, the radio is here. Um, but the radio also ties into the chart plotter, so even though the radio and the RT29 is around the corner, you'd, you'd be able to access it from up here, um, you know, and so forth. But, uh, but I, I do want to emphasize the Yamaha F300 is really quiet. Uh, when we're up here cruising at 25 knots, we hear the flow of the wind and the water. We don't hear the engine at all. So we can listen to music and stuff while we're driving. And with the 27, you have a diesel heater because you're a gas outboard. Right. So you have the diesel heater. You have one right there, and then there's another one on the Bieber. And um, the interesting thing with the Wabasto diesel heater, it actually sits right underneath here. Um, it's a little unit about this big. It's an Airtop STC 2000. And uh, because it's a gasoline boat, it's a 147 gallon gas tank. We round it up to 150. It makes the math easier when you're filling up and, and how much fuel you got left, whatnot. But uh, 
um, we need a diesel tank for fuel for the heater. And that on, on the RT29, the diesel heater just takes a siphon out of the diesel tank because obviously it's a diesel inboard, right? Um, because we're a gas boat, they, there's a five gallon fuel tank for diesel on the RT27. So an advantage we have is we can not run marine diesel from the fuel dock, we can actually run kerosene instead. And kerosene actually is diesel. Um, and it's totally supported by Ovasto. It burns cleaner, so less soot, you know, and stuff like that, and there's less smell and stuff from it. So we less actually- Less smell and less soot on your boat. <laughs> yeah, and it also keeps the um, uh, less maintenance you'll have to do on the Ovasto mm -hmm. heater um, because it's running cleaner fuel. Kerosene is just an ultra, for, ultra clean form of fuel. Um, but because we have a dedicated five gallon tank, it makes it easy to run kerosene instead of diesel. So we have a lot more control over that. Zena's gonna do the galley. <laughs> so on this one, we have these two is what I was talking about. So you have one full one here, one here. They're not big shelves because you have this in the way. Then you have another one down here. And then you have all of these drawers. And then this is what I missed in the other one when I was talking about all your pots and pans. That's really nice actually in the RT27. And then you have the same stove and this is the small, you don't have anything on this side. But you have this and then if you move that over you have that. Yeah. Yeah, the, the refrigerators actually are, I mean, they're the same same refrigerators between the boats, but um, they look small up front, but that freezer goes, I don't know if you can see that, it goes all the way back. Uh, how many limits of shrimp can we get in that freezer? Seven. Seven limits of shrimp. In a bag, suction all the air out. Right, vacuum seal. Yep. <laughs> the helm seat on the RT27, um, so this oh. works. It's different than the RT29. The RT29 pivots forward and backwards depending if it wants to be dinette or uh, face forward. On the 27 pulls up and out into the aisle way. Then this pivots back and then it's got adjustments to go forward. So one of the things is because of this, we're always raising and lowering this because if we're driving, then I have to lower this a little bit. One of the disadvantages it does on the RT27 is where is, where's my drink holder for my coffee? Right, um, the uh, <clears throat> you can't use these when you're under underway because uh, it'll knock it off. So I usually have this folded up, and my coffee sits right here as I'm driving. In the cave below on the RT27, I would say you could get one adult in here. I don't know about two on the RT29. You could fit two people under there. Yeah, you know, yeah. Our daughter loves this spot. <laughs> Yeah, and here and again, that's the two foot extra beam of the RT29 while you get that extra space. Yep. So we go down into the stateroom. Yeah, not a V berth. Not a V berth. So the stateroom. That is nice. So lay down one more second. I just want to let you see the size of this. Martin's not extremely big, but he's he's 5'9. So look, it shows you the bed has got lots of extra space. Yeah, so if he was to lay down normal, yeah. Looks a little more comfortable than the uh, B berth for getting in and out anyways. Being able to get in and out on both sides of the bed would be really nice. The other thing I will say too is uh, I've heard from other owners in the RT27 with the V berth. And we'll go over there and I'll lay down and show that one here in a, in a, in a minute. The um, If you're like six foot five, six foot seven, the V berth on the RT27 is is going to be cramped for you, just from a length perspective. Yeah. Where the RT29 gives you the full length for, for uh, the super tall guys. Right. So you do get a little side table, a little bonus there. Like a nightstand. But I'm, so the stateroom is nice, and you get a little nightstand, you get one little cubby. But if you compare it to the other, so this is a wine cooler, but if you compare it to ours, I have two big cabinets for storage and three or four drawers, three drawers. Three drawers. And so this has one cubby there and it's actually kind of small. <laughs> <laughs> the wine cooler takes up a lot of space. Yeah. You know, a lot of people pull the wine cooler out. Well, I heard they would something. make that a storage. Yeah. If you don't want the wine cooler, they could put that as a storage. Yeah. And then you just have that one. So you're... 
when it comes to storage, I think the R27 has more storage capabilities, but I guess you have to outweigh comfort or storage. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. I don't know. I don't know if an RT twenty nine owner would agree with that, but it certainly Probably not. Would, but, but my it perspective, would, it would. <laughs> it certainly would be debatable because we've, because also consider in the cockpit, the center cockpit is a diesel engine, and on RT twenty seven, the center cockpit is open storage. On mm -hmm. top of that, and then here is your head. And the head is his quite a bit bigger than the RT27. Yeah, it is. You have a so bigger space right. down here for showering. Yeah. And the storage is probably compar comparable. And things are the, that are the same between the RT27 and the uh, RT29, same same refrigerator, same stove, um, <clears throat> same microwave. Electronics are, are the same as they, um, they do Garmin. Um, Right now they're doing the 8600 8, series. Mm -hmm. Currently the... Um, then you have your uh, remote control, but that's got to be for the thrusters down there. Yeah, for the balance their thrusters. ICOM radio, VHF, mm -hmm. and then all your normal switches and stuff. You know, your horn, your windlass, um, your What's running the lights. radio? Fusion radio. Oh, right here. Oh. Yeah. And the fusion radio right there. Okay. Right next to the television. Is this the little Vince? Oh, the little ones oh. are big. Um, no, this is actually, um, this is an advantage that the RT27 does not have, and that is cabin heat from the engine. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah. Yeah, we don't get any any heat that's usable from an outboard, but the diesel, um, <clears throat> the diesel will actually heat the hot water tank from the, from the heat generated by the engine, whereas getting hot water on the RT27, you can only do through a six gallon hot water tank. And actually to start with that, because the, the six gallon hot water tank will last about a day um, if we're lucky. <clears throat> and it's expensive to reheat that, uh, that tank up because you have to run it off the inverter, off the batteries, um, which is not ideal. Or you just, you know, you, you leave the dock with it fully heated and then you, you get a day worth of hot water. The RT29 has got an 11 gallon hot water tank and it's, at, it's not heated at all off electric unless you're on shore power. Um, if you're underway, the engine heat actually heats the hot water. So uh, um, that's a that's a big bonus on the RT29 for getting hot water. So now if you look at how Martin fits on this one as opposed to the 29, put your legs out. So about the same room, it just uh, probably is easier getting in and out. Yeah, the stateroom is definitely easy to get in and out of, easier than mm -hmm. the V-berth is. And there's uh, really two main sleeping positions on the RT27. <clears throat> so... It was actually designed to put the pillow here and there. So you sleep that way. You sleep this way, right? And Alzina will sleep on this side. This is normally how we sleep on the boat, right? The other way, right, the which challenge we're, is, Which we're gonna try. Yeah, the other way is you put... Two pillows there. You have two pillows this way. And then you sleep one person there and one, one here, person right next to you. One person here. And then your view of the television you yeah. know, to be able to see the TV. Which is somewhat how we lay when we're just watching TV. Right. <clears throat> so we're going to try that and see how comfortable it is. And, and here again, for, for you folks watching that are like 6'3", 6'5", 6'7". You might have a tough time. Yeah, that usually <laughs> ends up with... Either their feet or their head somewhere down here, where the RT29 yeah. has a lot more, a lot more room lengthwise. And here is what I was talking about: the storage. It's actually, it's two drawers, and then you have a big storage right there. Anything underneath. Yeah. Yeah, this. Yep. And then you have the big storage there, like that one, and a small storage. So if you see, this one's a lot smaller, or not a lot, I'd say a little bit smaller than the 29. So this was one of the things we really liked on the 27, you know, was the, the size of the head, right? It's not, it's not big, but it's big enough, right? And it's got a shower, right? So we shower on our boat um, quite often, actually. You know, so that was really important that we had enough room to mm -hmm. turn around, yep. you know. And showering on a boat is very different than showering at home. 
Um, you know, I was on a submarine for many you years. Yeah, unlimited water. Right, yeah, water is of limitation. Hot water is even more <laughs> limitation. <laughs> so you do ship showers, right? Turn the water on, you get wet, turn it off, soap up, and then turn the water back on, rinse off, and you're done, right? So they're they're very quick, and you don't use a whole lot of water. It's no shower. relaxing in the hot water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's... Like at home. Right. right. And then a couple other features the RT29 would have that you would not get on RT27 is um, if you wanted the aft helm station um, to be able to drive back here, this would be really good. Like if you're crabbing and shrimping and stuff, you can do all the driving and work in all of your fishing gear and stuff back here. The, the RT27 doesn't have an aft helm station. And the other thing is where you can drive the boat is you can get a command bridge on RT29. You can drive up top and that way you have better visibility all around the boat um, as well. And the RT27 doesn't come with a command bridge either. In our case, the Xena would never go up in the command bridge because the boat would go like this and she'd feel like she's going to get thrown off the boat. But she'd stay down at deck level. No, she would not. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. Mm -hmm. So here on the transom on the RT-29, it's got hot and cold water for a uh, shower transom you know, um, back here. The RT-27 has one as well out on the transom. Mm -hmm. um, great for rinsing off if you were like swimming off the back of the boat or something or in our case, our water's a little too cold to swim off of, but we come back with the dogs with sand and stuff all over them or dirt, we can clean the dogs off. Without giving them an ice bath. Yeah, before bringing them in the boat. So another advantage is when you have the diesel inboard, you don't have an engine right here, right, i.e. the outboard. So it makes a real convenient place to stir, to have the dinghy, <clears throat> um, just like the RT31 has over there. That makes real convenient dinghy storage, easy to deploy, easy to retrieve. Um, easy to work with. Um, I will say in the RT27 with the dinghy lift or without the dinghy lift and using an inflatable, um, there's no fantastic solution for a dinghy in the RT27. It, the, the dinghy is all about a compromise in RT27. Um, so we opted to, uh, to not get the dinghy lift because we wanted the view behind the boat. Um, and we didn't want it in the way of any kind of fishing and that kind of stuff. And then that means we have an inflatable dinghy and we have to inflate the dinghy in the cockpit. That's not fantastic, but it's doable. Um, but also keep in mind the inflatable dinghy doesn't have a hard bottom. So if there's barnacles and rocks on the shore, I'm more prone to get a leak in the dinghy as opposed to having a nice fiberglass bottom, you know, on the, on the dinghy, which you would easily be able to do like an RT-29. Um, or the dinghy lift, obviously, on the RT-27, you get a hard bottom dinghy as well. Now on to the 27. Yep. So, and the other thing I really like about both boats is the floor plan. So if you notice, both the RT-29 and the RT-27 have the same floor plan where the big window that goes out in the cockpit opens up all on the starboard side, the helm's on the starboard side, you'd be fishing on the starboard side most of the time. Um, that works really well. The RT-29 is the exact same floor plan. The, the 23, the 25, and the 31 are the inverse. It's they put the dinette on the port side and, let, and went to a single seat on the helm. We like the double seat on the helm. That way I'm up there driving and the dog sits next to me. Or the Xena can sit next to me if we don't have the dogs. And just do a quick walk around of the boat. So the other thing I really like about this RT27 is the light gray. It's not a lot of light oh. colors that the factory does. They do like a dark blue, they do dark reds, they do dark greens, they do dark grays. Um, you know, but the light gray is a, a really nice, uh, nice feature. We really like the, the light gray color of our boat. And since the boats are out of the water, that's the bow thruster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the bow thruster. Now, one thing to note about the bow thruster on the RT-27 is it is not going to overcome strong wind and strong current. <clears throat> and we come over here and look at the RT-29. It's in the dark gray. And the bow thruster of the RT-29 is there. And uh, one other thing I mentioned, just as looking at the boats, is trailerability. Um, both the RT-29 and the 27 are trailerable. However, since the RT-29 has that 10-foot beam, it needs an oversized permit, and it obviously needs a much bigger truck as well. Um, it's a much heavier boat than the RT-27. But the RT-27 is not a light boat either. Um, you know, so you're still probably going to want at least a three-quarter or a, um, a one-ton pickup. And the RT-29, you probably want a one-ton pickup to tow. But this part I would really like on the RT-29 because, like I said, you get a much better dinghy. You have an easier dinghy lift um, on the back. Um, just have, that inboard engine just lends itself to a really nice dinghy solution. 
a dinghy. Uh, now he's in. not saying he doesn't want an outboard, just for those folks that think right. that. So boats are all about compromise. It all depends <laughs> how you're going to use it. He just it. said he would like to have that dinghy. <laughs> Then looking at the back end of the RT29, so you got the rudder, you got the prop, uh, there's your stern thruster, right? It's got a diver's dream anode in the back, which is nice to have. Um, both boats have Lenco Auto or Lenco trim tabs, uh, which are electric tabs, um, and then underwater LED lights too, which is really good for attracting uh, shrimp and other fish and stuff at the dock. Really um, makes it fun for the kids. So an advantage that you would have on RT27 is if you want a trolling motor, right, to be able to do, you know, a knot really slow or just to take engine hours away from the main engine, really easy um, to get a kick around the RT27, um, not so much on the RT29. So we like having the second engine as a backup um, and also like if we're out crabbing and stuff, we're just waiting on our pots and I'll just pace back and forth a mile this way, a mile that way on the kicker. And then same thing, you know, Lenco auto, Lenco trim tabs, uh, electric, and then the uh, underwater lights as well on the tabs. So cool. So uh, that's the differences, the main differences between the RT27 and 29. If you like this video, be sure, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps us out a lot. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click here and watch another. If you enjoyed watching this video, click the screen to watch another.